Good morning. My name is Pat Dowell. I'm the third ward alderman, and I could not be more proud to stand beside Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and my fellow alderman, Sophia King, who is on her way, and the leadership of the Chicago Convention and Tourism Industry, McCormick Place CEO, Loretta Clark, and Choose Chicago Chair of the Board of Directors, Glenn Eaton, to speak about the return of conventions to Chicago. Conventions, tourism, and the multiplying effect they have on Chicago's economy and culture is profound. As the Chairman of the City Council Committee on the Budget and Government Operations, I have seen the outsized impact the, the pandemic-related closure of McCormick Place has had on the city and its budget. But even more so, as an alderman representing historic communities of color, I have witnessed the devastating personal effects of the closure on a countless number of my residents who either work directly for MPA or for one of the related industries like the local hotels, the restaurants, the bars, retail stores, and more that depend on millions of tourists that visit Chicago every year. Returning even a fraction of these visitors will put people back to work. It will help Chicago's budget. It will help the city on its way to a better post-pandemic normal. My communities of the South Loop and Motor Row that surround McCormick Place will benefit greatly from this reopening. Hugely popular restaurants and bars like Moody Tongue, which just received a Michelin star, Reggie's Rock Club, Momentum Coffee Shop, Bureau Bar and Restaurant, Lips, Fat Poor, and countless others are ready to welcome old and new customers. Our new world-class hotels are here to cater to convention attendees, and one-of-a-kind cultural attractions like the recently announced Smash eSports Stadium will bring in even more tourists to the neighborhood. I commend Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, CDPH Commissioner Arwadi, and IDPH Director Enzike on their thoughtful stewardship through the pandemic, which has allowed us to get to this point where we can safely reopen McCormick Place to conventions and tourists. It's a huge, huge accomplishment. Thank you once again for the opportunity to speak to you about the importance of conventions and tourism to Chicago. And with that, I introduce our governor for the state of Illinois, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Well, thank you very much, Alderwoman Dowell, and um, good morning to everyone. Spring is in the air here in Chicago, even with a little overcast outside, but what a great day it is. I'm very proud to be here with Mayor Lori Lightfoot, with IDPH Director Dr. Ngazi Azike, CDPH Commissioner Dr. Allison Arwadi, McCormick Place CEO Larita Clark, uh, Choose Chicago Board Chair Glenn Eden, President of the Chicago Automobile Trade Association Dave Sloan, uh, and uh, Alderwoman Sophia King, DCEO Director Sylvia Garcia, President of the Chicago Federation of Labor, Bob Ryder, and President of the IHLA, Michael Jacobson. We are here today because we are making an important step forward, a step away from the challenges of the pandemic and toward normalcy. The life-saving power of vaccinations and the hard work by the people of our state has led us here. In recent weeks, we have seen our statewide COVID case rates and hospitalizations flatten and begin to fall, demonstrating a surge far short of the one that we saw over the fall and the winter. To be clear, our fight against the virus isn't over yet, but things are getting better. And the excitement has been building for today's announcement. Finally, the return of our beloved Chicago Auto Show.
The auto show is the nation's largest and longest running. It's a marquee event for McCormick Place and the entire region, attracting industry leaders, tourists, gearheads, inventors, and curious residents alike. And this year, the show will operate with a hybrid indoor-outdoor model for the first time in city history, assuring that health and safety here at McCormick Place are our highest priority. Bringing the auto show back will create thousands of hours of work for union workers. Altogether, pre-pandemic, McCormick Square operations directly accounted for over 17,000 jobs. Its reopening is a critical step toward our state's overall economic recovery, which has seen 93,000 jobs filled in just the first three months of 2021. With strong public health protocols in place, the Chicago Auto Show will be the first large convention to take place in Illinois since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, setting the stage for the safe return of big events in the months to come. Of course, we have to make sure that we don't see another surge of the virus, and the best way to do that is for everyone to get vaccinated. If you haven't gotten around to it, it's time to vax up Illinois. It's easy to sign up for an appointment by calling 833-621-1284, or in many places you can now just walk up and get a shot today. That's how we truly will put an end to this pandemic. Since 1901, the Chicago Auto Show has brought smiles and excitement to our city. So many of us have brought our families to the auto show. We've test driven cars here, and we've looked at the future and imagined the fun of driving the next cool concept car. Well, the fun is back, and I, for one, can't wait. It's now my pleasure to introduce the mayor of the greatest city in the greatest state in the entire United States, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. So thank you, Governor Pritzker. And, and I think everybody is really excited about this announcement because of what it represents. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to recognize the other leaders that are here, Alderwoman Pat Dow, uh, Alderwoman Sophia King will be joining us, uh, Illinois Department of Public Health Director Ngaze Nzike, Chicago Department of Public Health Commissioner Allison Arwady, uh, McCormick Place CEO uh, Loretta Clark, uh, Board Chair Jeff Becky, Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association President and CEO Michael Jacobson, uh, Chicago Federation of Labor uh, President Bob Ryder, uh, choose uh, Chicago Board of Directors Glenn Eden and Executive Director uh, David Whitaker. And Dave Sloan, uh, the president of the Chicago uh, Automobile Trade Association and why we are, are here. Um, just over a year ago, this space we're standing in looked incredibly different. It was the height of the pandemic uh, when COVID-19 infections were sky high and climbing and fear and uncertainty were persistent daily concerns. At the time, we were still learning about COVID-19. But what we did know is that if we didn't move quickly to create more spaces for people to receive the care they needed, we would risk our entire healthcare system collapsing. So we turn our beloved McCormick Place Convention Center, uh, which had sat idle uh, for several months at that time, into an alternative care facility in a number of days which kept our city prepared in the event that our hospitals did become under overwhelmed, which thankfully did not happen. This facility that was here, built by union labor, um, uh, funded by FEMA, supported by the state through IEMA, um, and staffed and managed by a group of volunteers, was incredible to behold. This would later be regarded by FEMA um, as the most professionally run alternate care facility in the country, and no surprise, because it was Chicago made. This incredible effort was made possible thanks to the hard work and expertise of individuals and organizations across all levels of government, organized labor, healthcare community, and corporate sectors. And that's the same kind of collaboration that has made today's announcement possible. I will tell you, I have many <clears throat> memories of 2020, some that I 
will remember for a lifetime. And one of the grimmest was being meeting in City Hall with Bob Ryder and other leaders from um, organized labor uh, and others to talk about the fact that we had to close down McCormick Place to keep people safe. It was a grim day. It was a sad day. People were worried about their livelihoods. But now, we're back. More than a year later, Chicago conventions are now able to safely return to this great facility, starting with the 113th edition of the Chicago Auto Show, which will be held from July 15th to 19th. This announcement is, of course, supported by what we're seeing in the COVID-19 data, both at the city and state level, which is a continuous downward trend allowing the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago to align on guidance for conventions to return to McCormick Place and across our city this summer. It also comes as last week's announcement of expanded Phase 4 regulations, which will allow indoor events such as the United Center and places of worship to operate at 25 percent capacity. So yes, fans are back in the stands and parishioners are coming back to our houses of worship. And the Chicago uh, Bridge Phase, which will allow our city to continue expanding capacity if our public health metrics continue to improve, improve, and we are hopeful and optimistic and are going to be working diligently to make sure that that happens. Furthermore, today's announcement is part of our broader Open Chicago initiative, which details our plan to safely and fully reopen our city, sending the clear message to the nation and to, and to the world that Chicago is indeed back. Our city and our vibrant businesses, venues, and neighborhoods are open and ready to welcome folks back. Taking together the reopening efforts supported by Open Chicago will allow us to take smart, safe steps towards fully reopening to a sense of normalcy and build on our city's ever-growing list of firsts. We were the first city in the nation to publish a comprehensive COVID-19 recovery plan detailing our pathway out of the pandemic. We have been, become the first city to lead the nation when it comes to vaccine distribution efficiency and equity, so much so that other cities across the country are looking to us as a model. And now, thanks to initiatives like Open Chicago, the support of our partners at the federal and state level, and organized labor, and so many others, we will be able to one of the first cities to fully and safely reopen in the nation. In order to keep up this phenomenal progress, of course, we need to continue doing what we know works, to slow and stop the spread of this virus, which unfortunately still remains very much part of our present. And as the governor said, it's way past time to get vaxxed up, Illinois and Chicago. We are in the first time since we started vaccinations in December. Vaccine availability is not an issue in Chicago. You can get it anywhere. You can walk up, you can make an appointment, and you need to do that. We can keep making these kinds of announcements only when we are working together and people are getting this life-saving vaccine. It is safe, uh, it is efficient, and it is available. So please get the vax. Every day that our COVID-19 metrics continue to tick downward brings us a day closer uh, to being able to put this pandemic in the rearview mirror. And we are too close to accomplishing this mission to give up now. Our goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to be fully open by July 4th. I am working night and day uh, toward this goal, as are our public health uh, department. But we and I need you to continue to be on this journey with us. And that means getting vaccinated now as soon as possible. So I urge everyone to continue to follow the public health guidance. Make sure that you take advantage of the life-saving vaccine, which is free and readily available all across the city. And at this time, because we are back in McCormick Place, it's my pleasure to welcome up the CEO, Loretta Clark. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I can hardly retain my composure. We are so excited to be able to make this announcement today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to truly thank you 
Dr. Ezekiel, Dr. Arwady, for your perseverance. I, I know for your commitment, for your loyalty. I know that it was difficult. I wasn't in your shoes, but I'm sure that it was very difficult to make some of the decisions that you made. And I thank you for this opportunity to join Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, Alderman Dowell, Alderman King, Chicago Federation of Labor President, Bob Ryder, our board chairman, Jeff Bethke, ASM Global, uh, general manager, David Coston, and one of our board members, Terry McGann. I'm honored to be here with you today. I would like to thank all of our partners at the Chicago Automobile Association for their commitment and dedication over the past several months. We didn't know how this would play out. We just began preparing. The Chicago Auto Show is one of the most popular and iconic events. The show has been on our campus for decades, and millions of people have come through our doors to see the latest cars. We often hear from families who have come to the show for generations. Typically, the auto show is held during the month of February. While it may be a few months later than normal, we are beyond thrilled to welcome back all of them to McCormick Place. Our teams at MPEA and ASM Global began working with auto show executives last summer to create a plan that would ensure the health and safety of everyone who attends, exhibits, and works at the show. This has been a collaborative effort with our partners in the governor's office, the mayor's office, and the state and city health officials. Under Dave Sloan's guidance and leadership, the auto show team was extremely flexible and adaptive to our, as our country faced new surges of the virus as well as new developments in the science behind fighting the virus. The health and safety plan for the auto show was in addition to the work undertaken on campus for overall health and safety. In fact, it was a year ago today, this month, when we announced that McCormick Place would be one of the first convention centers to pursue accreditation from the Global Biorisk Advisory Council. And in August, McCormick Place was awarded the GBAC Star of Accreditation, the gold standard for our industry. Today, our entire campus is accredited. From day one, our priority has been to ensure the health of our guests and employees. And as we reopen, we will continue to be relentless in this area. A few months ago, in collaboration with CHU Chicago, we launched Healthy Meetings Chicago, a virtual experience designed to help our guests plan their visit to campus. And you can see that at healthymeetingschicago.com. This was designed knowing that requirements can and will change as health conditions change. We are committed to adapting as conditions evolve to ensure the health of everyone on our campus. Importantly though, these health measures will not detract from the experience. We know that our guests come to events for their own specific reasons. Whether it is a family wanting to see the brand new vehicle, a doctor seeking the latest clinical trial data, or a business person coming to demonstrate the new technologies that their company has created. Everyone is on a mission when they come to McCormick Place. We are glad that we can return to providing the outstanding experience that our customers have come to expect without compromising health and safety. Finally, on behalf of the nearly 3,000 people who normally work on our campus and the thousands of tradesmen and women that work here during events, I would like to thank Governor Pritzker, Mayor Lightfoot, Dr. Ezekiel, Dr. Arudi, and your teams, and you probably owe your teams a special <laughs> thanks from all of us because we bug them a lot.
Thank you again for your commitment to health and safety. And then thank you also for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come to McCormick Place today to share this great news. Your being here speaks volumes about the importance of the convention, meetings, and events industry. We can hardly wait to return to our mission of creating job opportunities and being an economic engine for the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago, and our local economy. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to Glenn Eden, the chairman of the Board of Directors of CHU Chicago. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. I'm thrilled to be here today. The return of the auto show represents Christmas in July for us. The, the past 14 months have brought unprecedented challenges, but it's wonderful to see the light at the end of the tunnel. This weekend, I had the opportunity to bike through Bronzeville, visit the Gwendolyn Parks, uh, Brooks Park, to walk along Navy Pier, eat at some amazing restaurants. It is wonderful to see our city begin to come alive again, especially during National Travel and Tourism Week. And the news today just continues to demonstrate that Illinois and Chicago are back in business. And this is only the beginning. The news today that the Chicago Auto Show will open in July at the McCormick Place is one more step on our path to recovery. And even more importantly, it is terrific to know the show will return with the highest standards of health and safety in place. I'd like to thank Dave Sloan and his team, along with Loretta Clark and her team, for their focused approach to creating a new model to safely welcome guests back to the McCormick Place. It is indeed no small task. It is also important to express our thanks and appreciation to Dr. Arwady and Dr. Ezeke and their teams for their dedication and focus during this pandemic. And while it should go without saying, and I'm going to say it, Mayor Lightfoot, Governor Pritzker, thank you for your leadership during this time. Tourism and hospitality was one of the first industries hit by COVID and by all accounts will be one of the last to recover. But today's news is a beacon of hope. It is hope for the thousands of people who can't wait to come back to work at the McCormick Place, but is also hope for the restaurant owner, the bar owner, the hotel GM, even the cab driver or baggage handler at Midway. While our industry has been hit hard, we have not given up. I've been continually astounded by the creative and innovation that we've seen from our partners as they've changed their business models and adapted to what 18 months ago would have been unfathomable. Despite unbelievable economic and business pressure, the community came together for health. Last May, we launched Tourism and Hospitality Forward, the first initiative in the nation that brought together all segments of the hospitality community to learn from each other and work together to ensure the health of our guests and employees. I'd like to take this time to thank David Whitaker and the great team at CHU Chicago for leading the charge here and their contributions for bringing us to today's milestone moment as well. The McCormick Place alone delivers billions of dollars in economic impact to the city and the state. As we take this step forward and move toward reopening, not only is this a positive development for the health of our city, but also for the health of our economy. Chicago is the best big city in the U.S., and that is not just my words. Condé Nast has voted us that for the last four years. Today is one more step towards delivering once again on all that makes Chicago an amazing place to live, to work, to play, and to visit. Now I'd like to introduce Dave Sloan with the Chicago Automob Automobile Trade Association. Dave. Thank you, Glenn. 
Well, on behalf of the retail auto industry in Chicago and Illinois, our uh, 400 franchise new car dealers, thank you for this opportunity to reopen McCormick Place with a special edition of the Chicago Auto Show. We were one of the lucky ones in 2020. We were able to hold our show in February last year, before, just before the pandemic hit. But like every other event, it seems like ever since then, we've been working on various contingency plans for the 2021 show. Since any contingency began with safety, we've been working with McCormick Place officials for months on an opening plan. And very early on, they saw that our show might provide a pathway to reopening the facility. We stand committed to providing a safe environment for all involved and will carefully adhere to the health and safety protocols and guidelines set forth by city and state officials. McCormick Place is an important economic engine for our city and state, and we take very seriously the responsibility that comes with helping to get it running again. Thank you to Governor Pritzker and Mayor Lightfoot and their teams who took the time to consider our plans and determine whether we could open safely. And thank you to Loretta Clark, David Costin, David Whitaker, and Bob Ryder for the countless hours of advice and direction you provided. How will we do it safely? To start, masks will be required, and tickets for the show will be sold exclusively online. Attendees will select a timed entrance window designed to carefully control the capacity of the crowd throughout each event day. We knew we had to design the show to fit the situation we found ourselves. So we reduced the size and shortened it and made it less expensive for the automakers to participate. We moved to right here to the West Building so that we could take advantage of its proximity to Indiana Avenue so that we could add an outdoor element like we've never been able to before. In addition to offering numerous outdoor test drives and uh, uh, other things going on outside, we're seeking permission to turn Indiana Avenue into an automotive street festival in the evening of most show days featuring local food, entertainment, and of course, sparkling new cars and trucks. Auto show fans will be able to enjoy favorites like Camp Jeep and the Ram Truck indoor test tracks, as well as Subaru's popular pet adoption event, all executed in a safe and healthy manner. And we're excited that Ford has embraced our outdoor space availability with experiencing, experiencing, experiences featuring the new Bronco, Bronco Sport, and all-electric Mustang Mach-E. As you can tell, the timing has allowed us to get creative and try new things, and the automakers have really embraced it. And can I say just one more thing? If you were going to design a place to try to pull off an event like this, wouldn't it look like this? 40-foot ceilings, overhead fans, the best filtration that money can buy. This place is designed for what we're trying to do, and we're so lucky to be here and have it. Combine that with the greatest uh, uh, labor force, convention labor force in the country, and we're just lucky to be here. And they've even improved it throughout this pandemic. That's the foresight of the state and the city authority that runs this, this building. So thank you. Thank you. We can't wait to show the special edition of the 2021 Chicago Auto Show to you. We'll see you in July. Now I think uh, that we'll be taking some questions for the mayor. From the mayor. Thank you. Uh, we are now happy to uh, take any questions that you have. Hi, Mayor. Heather Hi. Sharon, WTTW. Nice Can you uh, explain exactly what you mean by wanting the city to be fully open by July 1st? Does that mean no masks? Does that mean no capacity limits? And how does that square with what you said at Navy Pier about a week ago, saying that you wanted to take this reopening in bite-sized chunks so as not to trigger another surge? Well, I, I think they're entirely consistent. We're seeing on a daily basis steady progress in all of the metrics that we follow. Um, particularly uh, new case rates, 
um, hospitalizations, um, and percent positivity. All of those things are trending in the right direction, and our modeling suggests um, that that's going to continue to do so at a time when we're seeing um, steady progress on vaccines, but there's more that needs to be done. If we take care of our business and get people uh, continue to get vaccinated across the city, and we're working diligently on that every single day and really focusing on those areas of the city that we haven't seen uh, uptick the most, I feel very uh, confident that we can get there. I was very impressed. I was on Navy Pier on Saturday night. Um, saw the great fireworks show. But the level of enthusiasm for people coming together, having an opportunity uh, to commune, and people wearing masks and really following uh, the public health guidance, to me, that was a great example of what can happen when we come together and really focus on making sure that we move our city forward. So Dr. Arwady and I, and obviously in consultation with the state, we feel very comfortable uh, that we'll be able to get there. So you see no capacity limits as of <clears throat> July 1st? Do you that, still that's, see masks? That's our, that's our goal. And I, look, I think the reality is people are going to wear masks, um, and I think that's a good thing. Um, we've seen from the experience of Asian uh, countries, for example, that have had successive crises around public health. Now it's standard fare for people to wear masks. I think that's going to be um, something that we see here in the U.S. for probably at least the next year, if not further uh, beyond that. But our goal is to get our economy back on track, get our workers um, back, get our businesses back. Um, and the pathway to do that is through the vaccines. The city's rate of vaccination among 65 years old and <clears throat> older is still significantly lower than the state and the nationwide average. Yep. What is the city doing to address that since those are the people who are most at risk of having severe COVID and dying? Well, a, a couple of things. One is now we have, we're in a situation where we have vaccine that's readily available. We're going to continue now with Johnson & Johnson <clears throat> being um, off a of pause to go deeper with the plans that we had started right before the pause happened, taking vaccine to residents that are 65 and older, continuing to go back through the um, skilled nursing uh, facilities, senior facilities, but also talking to the children and the grandchildren of those folks who are 65 and older to get the family vaccinated so that we um, overcome those challenges. And again, looking at our data, and going deep into those areas of the city where we've seen the least amount of uptick and the continuing to forge ahead. We haven't ramped down any of our vaccine distribution efforts. In fact, we're ramping them up with new and more innovative uh, strategies to reach those people that are most in need. But as Dr. Arwady has said from day one, <clears throat> making sure that we get the most vulnerable people vaccinated, the people who are most at risk to get sick and worse to die. Um, that remains our focus, and that group 65 and older is very much in our mind's eye as we continue our vaccination distribution efforts. Good morning, Mayor Amy Jacobson, WIND. Do you need a uh, proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test in order to get into the auto show? Um, I think obviously we're, I'll let Dave Sloan answer that question, but we're obviously encouraging people um, to uh, get vaccinated so that they can safely move through. Dave, you want to address the um, yeah. public health? There won't be, you won't Pardon, can you step up to the microphone, yeah. please? Thanks. Yeah, you, you won't need proof of uh, vaccination, um, but you will have to uh, uh, register. Everyone will register. After they buy a ticket, they'll register, and then they will uh, have to fill out a short medical questionnaire so that we know the people, you know, just like you do when you came in this morning, so that we know that everyone on the show floor is healthy. And uh, one of those questions will be whether they were vaccinated or not, but there won't be a, uh, a requirement. All right, thank you very much. And I have one more question for you, Mayor. A follow-up on your, the mask comment that you just made. Do you think there'll ever be a time when you give us a choice whether or not we want to wear a mask? And, and what about the kids who have sat in classrooms for eight hours a day wearing a mask and then playing sports out in the heat wearing a mask. Some kids have fainted. We know in Oregon that track star, she uh, collapsed on, on the, um, the field. So is there ever going to be a time where we're going to be able to govern ourselves and have a choice? Well, this is America, and we're a democracy. We do govern ourselves every single day. So obviously what we have done over the course of this pandemic um, is provided a advice and guidance, sometimes mandatory, sometimes advisory, 
all toward uh, the purpose of keeping people safe and saving lives. And we're going to continue to focus on those things that we know that works. But obviously, if people get vaccinated, it provides a world of opportunities that didn't exist in a pre-vaccination uh, pandemic climate. So we're going to keep looking at um, what the public health guidance tells us, following that, following the science, um, and also making sure, as um, I hope, vaccines come online uh, for young people, and there's promising uh, developments in that area, making sure that we educate young people and their parents about what they also can do to take advantage of the opportunities um, to uh, protect themselves from uh, this virus. Mayor Craig Wall, ABC7, um, go, Craig. fully open follow-ups here. Um, <clears throat> we've asked this question before, but does this mean that uh, you're moving ahead with plans for these big festivals and all these other things that uh, people are looking forward to over the summer. I mean, are you basically giving the green light for all this stuff to go forward? Well, I, I'm going to say the same thing that I said to you about two days ago when you asked me this question, which is don't skip to the end of the chapter. There's more that's coming. We feel very confident about what the, um, the summer is going to look like. I've said this over and over again, that the summer of 2021 will look more like the summer of 2019 than 2020. We feel confident. Um, based upon where, what we're seeing in the data, versus based upon what our modeling is. And just like we started conversations uh, with the auto show uh, weeks, if not months ago, uh, we're gonna, we have been in conversation with a lot of uh, the big uh, festival and outdoor event uh, planners for some time now um, and keeping them up to date on where we think we're making progress. Um, we can't predict the future, but we feel very confident if we continue to follow the public health guidance and get people vaccinated, um, that this summer is going to be very different, very festive, um, and we're going to bring arts and culture and music uh, back to the city, which I think will be a great boost uh, to all of us. Question for the governor, if we might. Sure. Governor, the mayor saying she wants to see the city open by July 4th. What about the state? Uh, is the rest of the state going to be open? Are we going to be in phase five by then? Or what do you see? When do you see the state moving to that? Well, I'm optimistic. Um, I, as I've said to you before, we've set metrics for moving forward into the bridge phase and then to phase five. And uh, at least on the trajectory that we're on now, it looks like that we will be on a very similar timeline. Uh, I want to make sure, though, that you, I emphasize something that the mayor said, which is, we can't predict the future. Uh, and this virus has proven to be very challenging. Uh, the developments of variants, the uh, times in which it's a, uh, seemed to rise, surge uh, in states like recently Michigan, for example. And of course, we all experienced November and December and January here in Illinois. So we always are on guard. We're watching the numbers uh, like a hawk but I'm optimistic. I think things are going in the right direction. And for my colleague, Mark Maxwell downstate, he's wondering the mass vaccination sites that are open downstate, uh, what are your plans for those? How much longer do you expect to keep those open? They're obviously very expensive. They are. I want to remind everybody that thanks to the American Rescue uh, Plan and uh, the, the other uh, acts that have been passed at the federal level that those sites are paid for, for the most part, by the federal government. Uh, we want to make sure that vaccination sites are available to everyone in the state for some time to come. We are a long way from herd immunity. On the other hand, we've changed strategies a little bit. We're taking some, for example, of our National Guardsmen and moving them into even more mobile sites across the state. We have more territory to cover than the city of Chicago does. but. Uh, our National Guard has just been a tremendous help in reaching out to the 96 counties that are outside of Cook and the Collars uh, to make sure that we're covering all that territory. So we're evolving, but making sure that we've got as many sites available for people to get vaccinated as possible. 